In this video, I'm talking about the latest FOB mill, uh, mill gate uh, producer, softwood lumber and panel commodity prices across North America for March 24th, 2023. Hello again, everyone, Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. And I'm going to give an update right now about the softwood lumber prices across North America for coming on to the end of March this year, 2023. And it's not that great. Um, prices are f soft. And really the basic reason for that is that no one is stocking inventory. And so there, there was a little bit of an uptick in prices uh, for print of the week of March 24th. What seemed to happen there was the uh, retailers came in. I think if people who follow my videos or read my updates regularly, remember when I say that it is not the retailers who set the price uh, at the wholesaler level, at the uh, sawmill level, it is the large US home builders. The very big US home building companies come in and buy at such volume that they set the price uh, level, which then everyone else, um, whether they are stocking wholesalers, reloads or retailers, especially retailers, that's the price that they are quoted when they call up the mills themselves. And so in the past, sort of like historically at this time of year would be pretty good volumes of lumber sold. As uh, the weather gets to improve, uh, spring uh, would be normally coming on um, much sooner than it did this year. And therefore, the uh, large U.S. home builders will have made their orders and indeed by now be receiving their wood for their big projects that they know uh, they're going to be making this year. You know, tracks of hundreds of homes. Uh, those large home builders like to have the wood that they need on the ground before they start the construction. They don't want it to be arriving in transportation while they're breaking ground and beginning to lay the foundation of their new homes. And so this year there was quite a delay and people aren't really sure what's going on with uh, housing starts and home sales. And so there's a lot of hedging and um, people playing it safe and definitely, definitely no inventory building. When prices are soft like this and sales volumes are low, people don't feel the need to stock up on inventory. They think the production is able to ramp up at the mills if demand increases. And why would I why would I stock up an inventory now if no one else is buying and maybe the price will stay flat or even drop? So let's look at some of the graphs and the table so I can show you what the prices are right now in relation to each other, the various uh, two by four prices that um, all meet the building code and uh, compared to historically. Okay, great. And so then this is for the week ending March 24th, showing you that prices dropped that week on almost all the items, especially the benchmark sold at the largest volume, Western Spruce Pine Fir, two by fours at 365 down from 400 in the previous week, and then uh, down from uh, quite a bit from 456 in one month ago. Southern Yellow Pine, uh, we use East Side. It comes, um, the prices are quoted west side central and east side but east side is the highest volume so we use that it's a little bit more flat not as much of a change very interesting to note that eastern spruce it it is again down not by as much as the western spruce uh, compared to the previous week and down quite a bit from one month ago as i said studs needed to build a home they're actually up that's interesting to note. See, these are the kind of things that we look at these prices against each other, not just one of the prices, but all of the prices. Douglas fir, specialty item. Those prices are down. It only comes from the coast. It's uh, used in a specific type of building, not for your standard housing tracts. And then Canadian softwood plywood out of Toronto, which is flat. And that also looks a little bit promising for the weeks to come. And these are the same six items as the table you were just looking at, presented as a graph. 
showing you the two-year rolling average from March of 2021 to present, uh, 2023. And these images come directly off my dashboard, so customers are can look on Friday at what these prices are doing for that week Friday. As I was explaining about how those um, highs and lows of the past couple of years, as you can see in the early part of 2021, and then again at the end of 2021, which carried forward into the beginning of 2022. And now we have since about the middle of 2022 till now at the end of March this year, a bit of a leveling off. Uh, you'll note that pale blue line higher up on the graph and looking rather flat is your plywood. As I've mentioned before, there are fewer manufacturing facilities of plywood and OSB fewer companies making it, and a lot of those companies are not publicly traded in comparison to Dimension Lumber. And if you look at that red line, Western Spruce, which we talk about as the benchmark, those prices are quite low. Those mills here in British Columbia right now are definitely not making money. Okay, so that's the explanation of where we are right now, uh, not yet in April of 2023, and compared to uh, the historical which people will remember the past couple of years, definitely not normal. And the expectation is not to be repeated unless something else, you know, world changing happens. So the question on everybody's mind right now is where are we following all of those changes of, um, you know, from 2020 to 2022, really last year. And no one knows because this has never happened before. It's a combination of circumstances all at the same time and such extreme circumstances. So if you look at those graphs that I just showed you and those incredible highs of um, the past couple of years, those happened for entirely different reasons. In the end of 2021, when lumber prices increased by so much, it wasn't demand driven as it had been until then with people uh, flocking to buy new homes to um, put additions on their house or renovate. The problem was supply side with the uh, terrible storms and flooding, devastation, destruction of railway and highways that we had here in British Columbia um, in the end of 2021, which put such a delay on the ability of the mills to manufacture and especially to ship that people couldn't get their wood that they had already ordered for like three or four months. And so even though demand was dropping, prices were increasing because they couldn't, supply couldn't arrive to the market. Uh, if you've seen my other videos or read some of the other stuff that we write here at Madison's, um, approximately 50% of all lumber manufactured in Canada comes from British Columbia. And approximately 65% of all Canadian wood is shipped to the US. It used to be 80% or 85%, but with the softwood lumber duty ongoing from the 80s and even before that, we are now in softwood lumber dispute number five, has been more than $6 billion collected on uh, Canadian lumber crossing the border into the US. And so the ratio of sales to America has dropped as Canada di diversified by shipping to new, new markets offshore. Looked at another way, there is uh, somewhat more lumber manufacturing in the US than there is in Canada, but it's still not enough to satisfy the needs of the home building. So approximately 35% of all wood in the US at any time came from Canada. And if you divide that by two, because 50% came from BC, something like 16 or 17% of all wood in America comes from British Columbia. So during that slower time of the year, November, December of 2021, when British Columbia literally could not ship, the Port of Vancouver was closed for a couple of weeks, the CN rail, CP rail were sharing one rail line. The Coquihalla was uh, literally crushed in five different places. So there was no traffic coming from what's called sawmill country in the central interior of British Columbia. And that was enough to 
bring the supply down to the point that the lumber prices skyrocketed, not because people were rushing to continue to buy, uh, buy and to renovate new homes. And so now we are back to a more level supply demand balance, but sawmill capacity utilization rates are still low in Canada compared to prior to 2020. So there is still quite a bit of volume able to come back online in British Columbia and in uh, especially Quebec is the second largest manufacturing province in Canada. U.S. sawmill capacity utilization rates are relatively even to uh, like 2019. Uh, those rates generally are a little bit lower at around 85, 80 percent because there's a lot of smaller family-owned, medium-sized, underinvested, not optimized sawmills in the U.S., whereas Canada, where it's very competitive, there's a lot more modernized, um, large manufacturer, large volume sawmills that are optimized to run at 90 or 95 percent, and they are nowhere near that right now. That sawmill capacity utilization rate data I get is from the Western Wood Products Association. They're out of Portland, Oregon. They have a newsletter called Lumber Track. It's really good. It does have quite a lag. It's about three months ago. So the one that comes out in March will be January or December data. However, it's, it lets you know what's happening with the industry across, uh, across North America. Um, so I have one more graph. Let's look at that and get a little bit more of the year-over-year uh, -year change in the price of lumber. And so now this is that benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir 2x4 that we talk about, produced at the largest volume across North America, made in British Columbia, Alberta, Washington State, Oregon, and a little bit out of Idaho. The blue line is this year. It looks really low, but that's those levels are still higher than the previous 10 years from 2006 to 2017. And what we have for the week ending of March 24th, this price is up 4% to US $380 per thousand board feet, but it's down $76 or 17% from one month ago when it was $456. It's down $1,020 or 73% from the same week in 2022 when it was $1,400 per thousand board feet and is down $660 or 63% from two years ago when it was $1,020 US per thousand board feet. Normally at this time of year that price would be higher as you can see there was a blip in February but this ongoing harsh winter weather has put a delay to the usual seasonal lumber buying. Okay so that's the update as far as I know it right now. We can't say what's going to happen with lumber prices in April Normally, they would be uh, increasing already uh, seasonally right now, but uh, such an extended winter and such a um, lack of confidence in the marketplace is keeping prices low, keeping sales volumes relatively low. Uh, so check back often to see what's going on as we go forward in the weeks um, of spring and then in summer uh, for construction activity and lumber sales. So this company, Madison's Lumber Reporter, were published out of Vancouver, British Columbia. It was started in 1952 by Peter Madison. I'm the third owner. I took over, I was hired in 2003, and I took over in 2008 when my boss, Lawrence Cater, retired. He had run the company since 1973. So there's a lot of longevity and the price history data um, for all that time to 1952. That's why we have such a deep insight into what's going on with the market because I have all the data and I know what happened with housing starts, with the economy, all that kind of stuff. And we can infer based on current times what's going on right now. The data comes from industry as a market survey that we do on Thursdays and then we publish on Fridays for my customers who log in to see the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices for that week and the market commentary explaining why those prices are changing. 
for all the different uh, commodities and uh, species in the regions across North America. Eastern spruce, western spruce, southern pine, Douglas fir, cedar, uh, two by four, one by four, plywood and OSB, oriented strand board. You need three things to build a um, standard US, Canadian, European, or Japanese home. Dimension lumber, two by four, some kind of stud, and either plywood or OSB, some kind of panel. And so those are the main um, knowledge base that we track at Madison's, and we do it every week for that week. So if you like what you see here on YouTube, click like so that this video will be recommended to other viewers. Click subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when I make another update. And if you really need more than just the little snapshot that I do here as a complimentary service, go on my website, madisonsreport.com. You can fill out a form to see a sample and we will send you the list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel prices that we track and what that price is for that week. And we will send you that market commentary explaining why those prices are changing. So you can make your decision of the value of subscribing to get this information on Friday when everyone else gets it. And that will help you make your own business decisions for your company.